welcome back to my channel. Today we are making the Hexago bag. Um, but I have done like a completely different strap that I've never done before. Um, it's got chain on it. It's got no adjustable strap. Uh, and I've got it out of vinyl with some split rings. Uh, so if you would like to see how I've done this, please stay tuned. Alrighty, so let's get started. Um, so the fabric that I've used is like some upholstery fabric that I found in one of the many boxes of fabric that I have. So what I've done is I've interfaced it with the extra heavy non-woven fusible. Um, so that's the outside pieces. And then on the flat part, this is an Urban Threads embroidery design, I think. Or embroidery library. It's one of the two. I will put the link in the description. Uh, so obviously I'm, I'm going with bees because it's a hexagon. Uh, and then this fabric here is just a poplin that's from Spotlight. I don't know if it's still current or discontinued, but you can always find bee fabric. So I've interfaced all of these pieces with the fusible medium woven. And then this is uh, some marine vinyl in Pacifica Standard. And I think it's called, I don't know, caramel or butternut or I don't know, something. I can look that up. So today I'm going to do a completely different strap to what I normally do. So I've actually got some chain that I got from Bunnings. Uh, so you can buy it in like a pack. This is the last of the chain that I had. So I've decided to just chop it in half and use it. So I'm also going to need some small split rings or like the key rings. I've just got some small ones in gold. Um, I've got two D rings and two zippers. Now if you want to, you could two two zippers on the top. And then I'm doing a slip pocket. Um, otherwise, but today I'm just putting the one zip. So that's what I've got as far as hardware. And I still need to grab my zipper. So I will do that when we're up to it. I actually think I might go with the gold teeth on the black. Just to kind of tie in the black here. And then in the lining as well. I think that's my plan. Uh, so I'm going to start with my pocket. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the pocket pieces right sides together and then I'm going to stitch along the top with a joining stitch. I'm also using um, antelope coloured thread uh, from the link that I will put in the description box. I like this colour. It's like a nice lighter brown. Uh, I could have also gone with a gold thread which also would have worked with this colour palette that I've chosen. Um, so now, because I don't necessarily care about the edges, I'm going to fold both edges over and then top stitch one eighth of an inch from the top. This is just going to help it hold. I could have also done all the stitching in black, but I didn't want to, so I haven't. And I'm going to back stitch at both ends and then trim off those tails. So that's my slip pocket. Uh, if you want to, you could add a magnetic snap to this. I will not be, just because I don't want to. Uh, but it is something that you could quite easily do. So you would attach it now. And you'd put the um, male part here, so the bit that sticks out, and then the female on the main part of the bag. So I am just going to place this like so. And then I'm going to base around the edge so that everything is now one. Needle down to pivot. Now to line up this part, my, my um, pocket is actually sitting a little bit lower. So it might actually be more beneficial to me to flip it over and stitch it from the back. Just so I can see where that pocket's going to sit. And I'm just stitching one eighth of an inch from the edge of the main panel because I can trim down that pocket if I so desire, which I will be in a second. So these are my Class A knife edge scissors. Um, and the reason I'm explaining everything I'm using in detail is because I quite often get a lot of questions from you asking me what stuff is. So I'm trying to be as explicit as possible to let you know what everything is and then you can just go back over the video 
because sometimes I forget to put stuff in the description. Um, my most asked question is what machine is this? And it is a Mitsubishi LS2-130. Um, I didn't buy it because of the brand. I bought it because it was the one available on Facebook Marketplace. Alright, my slip pocket is on. It is adorable. So now I'm going to just switch straight to the zipper section. Um, I haven't put any foam on this, as you can see. The bag is not that big, and because I'm using the upholstery weight fabric, it's giving it the extra body anyway. But you definitely could put um, some fusible fleece on the back, or you could put um, some foam if you wanted to. Oh no, I've lost one of my outside pieces. I know I definitely cut it and interfaced it, so it's got to be here. That's the bottom of the gusset. That's the bottom of the gusset, so they can go together. Um, it can't have gone that far. You know what, let's move on. I'll come back to that. So I'm going to take a lighting piece and do my interior zipper pocket until I can find the missing piece. So I'm going to fold the fabric in half. Now because these are directional, the side that I'm not going to draw on is the side that you want them the right way up. So when this sits at you with the fold at the bottom, the bees are going to face the right way. But that may sound confusing, but try it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the box here with the bees the right way up. But when they sit on this panel, they will be upside down. So that when you look into the pocket, your pattern will be the right way up. If this doesn't suit you, you could actually just cut this in half and then rejoin them so that all pieces are the right way up. But I don't know too many people that look into the pocket to see if the facing side is facing the right way. So I'm doing my zipper pocket piece how I always do. Uh, and I always make the zipper space 3 eighths of an inch. And I like to do it 3 quarters of an inch from the side because I like to have enough room to stitch that evenly. So now I'm going to take my hexagon piece and if you've got a directional fabric, put the bees the right way up. For in my case it's the bees, your case it might be anything. And then I'm just going to line that up along there. Make sure I'm on a joining stitch length and I'm going to stitch the box that I've drawn. Now I drew this in a friction pen, so because it's white, if I slip it all I can delete or iron away, which is delete the pen marks. And I just ran out of bobbin thread. I knew I would, but that's okay because I prepared another one. The last bobbin was almost empty, which is why I didn't start with the strap. I didn't want to join. We're actually going to do the strap last because it's got a lot of stuff going on. And I've never done a video with that stuff in it. Now the reason I didn't use jump rings, or I won't be using jump rings, is because I just don't think they're strong enough to carry the weight of a bag. They're more of a jewellery thing. Uh, if you were going to use jump rings, I would definitely use multiple. So instead of just the one split ring I plan on using. I would use two or three jump rings to help carry the weight of the bag. But again, that's a personal preference. I'm not a jeweler, so I don't even own jump rings. And the split rings I bought, I actually accidentally bought the wrong size, but they were going to work out perfectly. And this is why I hoard things I miss by. Because you never know when they're going to come in handy. So I've just folded that roughly in half to get a snip mark in the centre so that then I can cut the centre. And then about half an inch away from the edge, I'm going to triangle out these corners. So you want to get as close to the stitching as you can without actually snipping the stitching. And so now you'll have this. So now I'm going to take the pocket and shove it through the hole and then I'm going to go over to the iron and press this flat. 
So while I'm pressing it flat, I'm also going to look for the missing piece so that I only have to stop the video the once. Um, eventually I am going to set up a permanent um, ironing station within the vicinity of where I sit. It's on my list of things to do, but probably not this week because I have a lot of orders and I still want to make my Christmas outfits. All right, I'm going to go and iron this and I'll be back. And it, it was on the other table. Uh, I've also ironed this. So now we are up to cutting a piece of zipper tape. Uh, and I always cut it the width of the pocket. And that way I know I'm going to sew the raw edges into the seams. Uh, while I'm here, I'm also going to cut a piece of zip that is the length of the zipper gusset part. And then wind this back up. And then I just put rubber bands on them. And that keeps them all relatively neat in a box of zippers that I have. All right, so first thing we want to do is put our zipper pull on. Now, I do have a zipper jig, and off camera, I always use my zipper jig. But on camera, I'm too lazy to move it over. So I'm going to manually put the zipper on. Um, so these are the new Love Heart zips that are on the website. So they're like a nice chunky zip with a Love Heart hole. I am a huge fan, and I plan on using them on a lot of stuff. Alright, so I'm just going to place the whole thing over the zipper. And then I want to line up this edge, because I cut the zipper the same size as the zipper pocket, I want to line that up. And then I'm just going to stitch around the zip. I could have also gone with like a, a golden colour because of the bees, or I could have just done black, or just done white. I'm also uh, needled down and then zipping it open to put the zipper pull out of the way. Needle down and pivot. As soon as I saw this pattern, I knew it had to be bees. Um, and if I had a more grown up bee design, I probably would have done that. But I'm trying to use my stash so that my videos will eventually be relevant with fabric that's current. I don't know if this is current or not. Uh, it was a spotlight poplin. So it might still be there or they may have discontinued it. I don't know. If I lived like 10 minutes from a spotlight, I'd check for you. All right, so now I'm just going to stitch the sides of the pocket together. And as always, I'm going to leave the bottom of the pocket open because that will be the last seam of the bag that we do so that I can hide most of the stitching. Okay. I always backstitch at the start and the end. I also always manage to cut my zipper the wrong size. It's like this magical ability I have. So I'm just going to chop off that excess. And so that is now the zipper pocket in. And I'm going to open it. Because it's important that we can get in there. Alright. Zipper panel. So I'm going to take the bees and put them whoops, right sides up. And then I'm going to take the zipper tape and sit that right sides up. And then I'm going to take this and put it right sides down. Like so. And then I'm just going to stitch with the edge of my foot running against the zipper on the inside. Like so. And then I'm going to turn and fold over just the top. And then I'm going to top stitch that down. Now you'll barely see these stitches because of the colour match of the thread. Um, but a contrasting thread can sometimes also look really cool. Uh, never underestimate a good thread contrast. Okay, so now I'm going to make sure that the bees are going to face the same way on the inside. So I want them all that way. So I'm going to flip that edge down so that the bees are technically upside down, but the fabric's right side up. And then lay this over the top and then grab my other panel. Now again, if yours is directional, you want to make sure what you you want to make sure you've got it facing the right way. So 
with for me I always make sure that the top is facing the same way but some people like the top here and then the top there facing the other way so that there's no right or wrong it's a personal preference I just thought I'd bring it up uh, because everybody asks me what's the right and wrong way and the official answer is whatever you want to do but just be consciously thinking about it that's all okay so then we're going to stitch and then back stitch uh, you can clip this if you want to if it was a bit longer I might consider clipping it but it's not so I'm not again personal preference and then I'm just going to fold over the top piece and crease that seam. Now, if you're not using vinyl, you may wish to iron this if you're a beginner so it's going to sit easier. Because it's constantly going to fight me as I'm doing this. I'm just used to it. So if you haven't used the vinyl for your gusset, you may want to iron this down so it sits exactly where you want so that you can top stitch it with ease. I'm just used to fighting it. Alright, trim that off. And then I'm going to take my zipper and feed it on. Now again, with if you've got directional fabric, think about which side you want it to stop. Alternatively, you could put two zips. It's your choice. There's no right or wrong answer. Whoops. This would also look really cute with gunmetal grey hardware. Didn't have to be gold. I just chose gold. Alright, the zipper is on. Then I'm going to open it. So now I'm going to stitch the bottom gusset on for the lining. I always like to do lining first because it's easier. So I'm just going to hold it right sides together and I'm going to stitch up to the zip on each side. So we're going to technically have a little bit of a gap there. But it's meant to be like that so don't stress. So I'm going to back stitch, I'm going to get up to the zipper and back stitch. You're about to have a lot of tails. We've just got to deal with that and chop them all off as we go. Or they get in the way. So again, stitch, come up to it, get to the zip, back stitch. Always backstitch. Doesn't matter that it's a short seam. You still need to backstitch. So I'm going to do the same to this side. Paying attention to your seam allowance. Um, if you're new to sewing and you're worried about the seam allowance, mark it with a pen. Stitch and backstitch. So now you've got your lining gusset loop. So now I want to take the outside piece. Now I also, again, I could have done this in vinyl to make the bottom of the bag vinyl, but I'm really liking the texture on this. It's got like a really nice upholstery texture to it. It feels cool. Um... So again, I'm going to do the same thing, just stitch the excess up to the zip, but not over the zip. We're going to stitch it closed soon. Back stitch, stitch up to the zip, back stitch, pull it out, trim it. Now this fabric is a very large weave, um, so I wouldn't leave it sitting in a pile waiting to interface. I interface it the second I cut it because it does fray in large chunks and very quickly. Alright, make sure all your tails are trimmed because it's going to be easier. So now we should have this. It's like a weird figure eight. So before we seal up the hole where the zip is, we need to prep our D-rings so that we can attach our handle. 
Now I won't be using swivel clips to remove the handle. However, because of the type of handle I'm about to make, I want the D-rings so that the split ring is going to sit at the top and be centered and look nice. Uh, if I was just doing an all strap, I'd use square rings instead. Or if I was going to use D-rings, I'd then use swivel clips to unclip it. Swivel clips look cool sometimes because you've got that extra hardware to bling it up. But again, it's your bag. Make it how you want. So I'm just folding both sides into the center with double-sided tape. That's another thing. A lot of people ask me what brand double-sided tape do I use? And the answer is the cheapest one I can find. I don't love any particular brand more than others. I don't seek out brands. I just go, which one's the best value for money? So this one comes from the reject shop in the hardware section. It's 25 meters for $2.50 or $3 or something like that. All right, so I'm going to top stitch this because I want to. You don't have to. And I'm going to top stitch the two edges. So I'm just going to chain stitch these and trim off the tails so that I don't get them caught. Like so. And then with the join side going against the flat side, I'm going to put it in the D-ring and voila. Do it to both of them while I'm here. Okay. So now all we're going to do is slot this into the gap where the zipper where we stopped sewing for the zip so it should just slot right in there depending on how much gap you left it might be stubborn uh, but it will go and if you're struggling just push one side in and then the other i find that helps it's through i just hurt my finger um, yesterday while out at the horses so it's a bit harder for me to poke things with a sore finger all right so I've got it in pretty close to the edge like that and then I'm just going to stitch all of this together so I want to stitch the lining the d-ring and the outer all together but I just want to do that section I don't want to go from end to end well, that defeats the purpose of what we've already done. Um, if you prefer to do drop-in linings, you could have just sewn all of this. Um, another option is, is you could bind the inside of the bag. There's lots of different ways to make the same bag. Alright, so now I'm going to zigzag down to really reinforce this uh, D-ring. Because this is what's going to literally hold whatever weight you put in the bag. And since I'm not keeping this bag, I don't know how much weight someone plans to put in it. So the zigzag just gives it extra stability without going through the same holes all the time. Alright, so let's, <clears throat> let's do the other end. Sorry, I ate a lemington while I was ironing and now I've got coconut in my throat. How do I do this to myself? Okay, so again, I'm pushing it down fairly far. And then I'm going to top stitch across all the layers. And I'm starting like a quarter of an inch over the original stitching I did before. And then we're going to zigzag. Needle down, pivot, zigzag again. And then back stitch. And then trim the tail so it doesn't look like as much of a mess as it is. And then you can open that zip right up. Okay, so now we've got this. We're going to build the bag, basically. So we want to do our linings first because they're more flexible. So what I need to do is I need to find the center 
of the top of the lining, which is here, and then do a little clip. So I'm going to clip both the outer and the lining at the same time because I need to find both anyway and it's going to be easy to do it now. And then I also want to find the centre bottom like that and then clip there. Don't clip with your snips. You'll hurt yourself. I have done it way too many times. I've learnt my lesson. Except yesterday. Yesterday I used scissors and managed to cut my finger because I wasn't paying attention. It hurt a lot. Alright, so then again I'm going to line... So when I say I'm lining up, I'm lining up seam to seam. Because uh, even if you've cut it or sewn it crooked, at least this is still the centre of the sewn parts. Which is why we do it now and not before we sew everything together. Okay, so then we're going to find the centre of this as well. Snip it. And we may as well do it all while we're doing it. And then I can put the scissors away. And then center of this one. And center of this one. Voila. So I can put the outer pieces back over there because I don't need them right now. But what I do need is Scully and my clips. So I'm going to start at the centre top and take one of my linings and make sure that the pattern is facing upwards. Otherwise you'll put all your pieces in upside down and that would suck after all the effort we're going to. So I'm going to pin this top bit to the edges like so and then I'm going to come and I'm going to pin the bottom. I like to go top, bottom, and then sides because the sides have to fit in to the space that is given. It's not like it's impossible, but it's just easier if you've got like the base lined up as well. Now these seam allowances at the side, you always want to point them to the bottom of the bag. It just helps the bag sit nicer. It's one of those things you have to trust me on. Or try and do it the opposite way and see how it works out for you. But then you're going to have to unpick things. So it's easy to take my word, I guess. So clipping, clipping, clipping. So now I've got like over half of it clipped. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I'm not a big clipper. I tend to like to just wing it. But because it's a hexagon, it's a little bit more tricky to wing. So I'm clipping. And because I should be teaching you good habits, not bad ones. So again, uh, seam allowance on the other side, point it towards the bottom. Okay, so this is what we've got. And now here's the kicker. Because this isn't the piece with the zipper pocket, I'm actually going to take off... Oh, actually... You know, I actually, because I haven't used foam, I'm pretty confident I can get the bag through that hole. I'm going to berth it through there. So you want to start wherever you feel comfortable. doesn't really matter. We've got to go the whole way around. And I'm going to back stitch, and I'm going to make sure I'm on a joining stitch length, not a decorative one. And in the three stitches I just did, I could feel that I was wrong. So we're going to get to the corner, needle down, and then pivot. Ooh. 
needle down and pivot. And we're just moving this piece out of the way as we go. It's because they didn't perfectly line up, so they would have been like the tiniest hole. So now what I want to do with my scissors is I'm going to come and cut a triangle out of the fabric at every one of the turning points on the hexagon. So I'm just cutting out the excess fabric in a V shape. What this is going to do is it's going to help it hold the actual like crispier edges of the hexagon. You can snip in and then snip out or you can just gouge a section. So then on the inside of this bag, it's looking, you can't really see, but it is looking nice and crisp in the edges. So that's one side. Now we're going to come over to this side and do exactly the same thing. Uh, so you can start at the top or the bottom. So long as you're lining things up, that's all that really matters. So that's the top and bottom. So then we can just work up or down the sides, whichever way you prefer. Uh, we're also making sure that we're not getting the zipper pocket because it does come close to the edges in the size that I made because we all know I love the one size zipper pocket for like every bag imaginable. It's my thing. I can't help it. And then we're going to do the other side. And then we just do the same thing to the outside pieces. Also making sure that that seam allowance points to the floor. And clip. Okay. So let's do this. Let's start here. Back stitch. Make sure the tails don't get tangled on my foot. Needle down. Pivot. Needle down. Move everything around. I was making sure then that the seam allowance at the side pointed towards the bottom. Needle down, pivot across. that bit. I saw that the clips weren't holding properly. 
So I'm just going to come back and stitch this little bit here that I knew it missed. There we go. All right, and then trim off all your tails. And then I'm going to take my snips and just gouge out where all the corners are. So that it's going to sit nicer. Oh, I hear a car. I wonder if that's for me. I may or may not have to pause the video in a second. Okay. So anyway, we've now got the lining done. So we're up to the outside. Uh, you can choose to do your zipper, po uh, your slip pocket panel first. Or not, that's entirely up to you. It doesn't really matter, they just all have to go on. You'll find that this side's going to be more rigid because it's got the thicker stabilizer on. I also forgot to find the center of the bottom gusset part, apparently. But that's okay. All right, line up all the clips or clip marks and put some pegs on. Plunder clips, pegs, they have a lot of names. Oops. Just threw them on the ground accidentally. Make sure I clip that seam allowance towards the bottom. I don't know if you can tell, but it is being quite stubborn and thick right now. But that's possibly because of the slip pocket on the inside. So you just got to basically show it who's boss and maneuver it until it behaves itself and it will I just need some more clips like that perfect Oops, I keep dropping all of my clips. You should pick them up as you go, because if you stand on them, they hurt like Lego, or you break them by standing on them. Neither of which ends up terribly well. Oops. Alrighty, so now we just need to stitch around. Take off a clip from somewhere, it doesn't really matter where, as long as you can get your machine foot in. Needle down, pivot! Certain sides are quicker to do than others. Um, that's just because of things like seam allowances and the thickness. Because I've got a, um, a slip pocket in here. Snip off 
the excess at the turning point. Yep. If you have a look, we've got nice crispy points again. So, last side. I want to make sure that my fabric, because this have, fabric has a grain, and I've decided to choose to make it go across the bag. So we just want to make sure that we're putting that where it needs to be. I find it easy to clip in my lap for anyone interested. I like it close. It doesn't hurt my arms as much, reaching out, clipping things. Okay. We're just going to clip up the sides, making sure again that this part goes down towards the bottom of the bag. I know you're sick of me saying it, but you'll remember because it's stuck in your brain now. Clip there, there. Don't know if you noticed, but this side was much quicker to clip, and that's due to the no slip pocket on this side. Alright. Oops. Let's do this. Squish it down, pick a spot to start. and then back to the start and pull it out trim that tail so it's driving me insane and then I'm just going to do it over the bin I'm going to trim off those corners again So now all we need to do is turn the bag. So I'm going to grab the lining first because it's always easiest to get in. And then I'm pretty much going to roll this bag up so it's now a burrito. And just bring the lining over the burrito. And then we can just... So I'm pulling from here and I'm gently... Easy. I'm not just pulling, I'm actually rolling my arm to get that to come out without breaking any seams from over pulling because it should come relatively easy. See, look at us go. Then I'm going to stick my hand into the pocket and just push. The bag's through, we just need to get it to twist to where it needs to be. Now, if you did foam, I would have left um, like a gap in the bottom third of the bag because it would not come out that easily, I promise. So I'm just pushing at all of the points where it changes direction to make sure I'm getting the shape that I want, which I am. And then I'm just going to pull out this pocket and use my fingers to tuck under the raw edge to the inside, squish it shut, and then stitch it shut. Making sure that any raw edgy bits are tucked in. Like that. Okay. 
zip that up. And so now we just need to make our pocket. So far, that looks really cute. I do need to roll this seam where it's really thick and then do my little pinch and, I don't know, pinch and shake. It's like aggravated assault on a bag. But it just helps to really kind of define the folds. Either way, we have a hexagon. So now let's make our strap. So this piece I have cut to 30 inches, but I don't actually know if this is the size I need. So I may have to chop it down. So we're going to see. We'll find out, I guess. So I'm doing a three quarter inch strap. So this piece is three inches wide. I can tell you this because I'm making it up as I go. And then my pieces of uh, metal chain are eight and a half inches long. And that's just because I didn't have anything else. This is all I've got. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a split ring on each end of the chain. Thread that on there. Because these are quite small, they're actually quite tough. They're not flimsy at all. So this one of these will now attach to the D-ring. And then the other one will attach to the strap when I'm finished making it. Me and split rings have never really been friends. I'm not very good at them. Fake nails aren't helping in this. Oh, actually, they might be helping because they hold it open without hurting my hands. So I suppose that's a good thing. Now, I'm obviously not making this strap adjustable, so I'm just winging it. No word of a lie. I'm winging it. But I just thought that the chain went really well with the fabric and the idea of the bees. So that's why I'm doing it. Uh, you could just follow the instructions in the pattern to do the same straps for that, if you'd like. I just thought something different for a change, since you guys always watch me do the same strap. Alright, so this is 3 inches by 30 inches. But like I said, I may or may not have to chop that down a little bit. We'll just see. Oops. I should be doing both sides at the same time. That would make more sense. All right. So I'll squish both sides down. And I'm going to fold it in half again, and then I'm going to top stitch all the way around with a long stitch length. So I'm going with something decorative, so I'm up to a four. And then off we go. down pivot across the bottom and back stitch when you get back to the start so that was an eighth of an inch from the edges I didn't think that was gonna go but It might go this way so we just need to I'm just gonna see if I can put that in and then it'll open back out so I can put a rivet there 
So that's all I really want to do. I just need it in enough to be able to rivet it onto the bag. Like this. So let's grab the hole punch, the rivet press, and some rivets. Okay. I'm actually pretty happy with how this is coming together. Squish that down. Rivet through. Preferably through both sides. And then on the end like so. And then squish that down. And then what I'm actually going to do is attach this to the bag so that I can see how long I made my strap and see if I need to make any adjustments before I do the other end. So the easiest way to do that will be to cut it, cut it to size and then I can just go back and stitch over that end piece with the machine, which is why my sewing machine hasn't been turned off yet. Or well, the light hasn't at least. Okay, so we just need to get this onto the bag, which is where I'm gonna struggle, not even gonna lie. And I want that on the inside. Preferably. Okay, so I'm going to stick my nail to open this up, hopefully, like so, and then feed it onto the D ring. I knew this bit was going to be where I struggled. I told you, me and split rings aren't friends. Um, There we go. I think I got it. Now the bag's not looking super stiff and hexagonal because I have not yet um, finished attacking it. All right, so I'm just working out. I actually think that I've done it really well with how long I've done it because I still need to add the other piece. So I'm genuinely quite happy with the length of my strap. So now to make sure that I'm doing it the same on both ends, I'm going to fold that in half and squish it through there like so and then bring it up and rivet it on the same end. So I'm making sure that there's no twist so that the raw edges are going to be on the same side like that. And then I'm just going to punch a hole, like so, and then grab this, push it through, put the cap on, then I get to flip, struggle with the other end of the strap onto the bag. So I'm just making sure there's no twists. Bring this up and again get it onto the bag somehow. Like I said, I'm not great with split rings. I probably shouldn't have chosen this to do on a video, but whatever. I've done it. The bag looks awesome. I'm ultimately happy. Just not this bit. But then your bag's done. So let me get there. Just need it that little bit wider without hurting myself. Ha! Ah, two hands. Look at that. Twist it round and feed it on. It is giving me a little bit more grief than I thought it would, but that's okay. So there you go, guys. One hexagonal bag. Again, I just need to come along and really define the creases. Um, and if you want it to sit even more stiffer, all you need to do is make it with foam. But I'm quite happy with how that bag's come out. So I hope that was a fun tutorial, guys. Um, and until next time.
All right, bye-bye.